Let's go ahead and run through a quick example of um, livestock. So research reported that 77 cows studied gained approximately 56 pounds with a standard sample standard deviation of 48.5456. What is a 95% confidence interval? So let's do this once by hand, where you're looking things up on the table. So we'd have to look up, you'll notice that this looks very similar to what we had for proportions, except it's an X bar, and it's a T star instead of a Z star, and our standard error is different. It's actually a lot simpler. So from the T distribution, so, we have our degrees of freedom is 76, but our T distribution doesn't give us 76. It only gives us 75. And that gives us our T star. Much easier to find the T star on the T table than it is to find the Z star on the normal table. Anyway, just substituted in all my numbers, calculated out, and came up with our standard, our confidence interval. Well, plus or minus 11. So using it on the calculator, which is probably how most of us are going to do, you are going to go to test. You should notice that tests are always first. You have to get all the way through the tests before you get to the intervals. There is a Z interval if you happen to know the standard deviation, but we'll go to number eight, the T interval. And then we'll go ahead and open that. We do not have the data, we have the stats, because they gave us the stats. The, so I will enter that, including the sample size, and this choose the confidence level of 95, and just like that, you get your confidence interval. Calculating the interval is not the thing. It's what does that mean? So with our interval, which by the way, that is the same interval we got before, uh, 56 minus 11 is 45, 56 plus 11 is 67. Did 95% of the cows studied gain between 45 and 67 pounds? Is that what that means? No. You should not be making a conclusion about the cows studied. The whole idea is that you are making a statement about what the true average is for all cows not just the ones you study. Are we 95% sure that a cow fed this supplement will gain between 45 and 67 pounds? Well, no. Not a cow, the average of all cows. You, it is very difficult to predict individual behavior. We are talking about average behavior for the whole population. Are we 95% sure that the average weight gain when fed this supplement will be between 45 and 67% or pounds? Yes, that's the statement we want. The one that's talking about the average for all of the cows. That's the one. Okay, you want to do another example, one where we have data. This is an interesting example, 1998. I remember this advertising campaign from the Nabisco company, the 1000 Chip Challenge, uh, claiming that they had over a thousand chocolate chips per bag for 18 ounce bags. So apparently some researchers, the Air Force Academy bought a bunch of bags, um, and this is just a little bit of their data. But to do this in a calculator, first you have to put the data in your calculator. Then we need to check our to see whether or not we actually can use the T distribution. Now in example one, we didn't have enough information to check to see if it met the conditions, but on this one we do. It does say that they randomly sampled, so we have to kind of assume that they did. And 16 is certainly less than 10% of all of Nabisco's cookie bags. Um, we need to check to see whether that it actually looks symmetrical. So let's see here. It does look symmetrical, but there is that gap there. So I did a, went ahead and did a box plot to see if we have an outlier. Our sample size is 16, which is just barely a medium. With, with the medium size, we are allowed a little bit of leeway. I don't think that that's a big enough of an outlier that it's going to be an issue. I think we're safe to go ahead and go on, but it... 
would be nice if it didn't have that outlier. I do think that you, you can get a little bit – we don't have very much data, so you can get a little bit too picky over just a tiny little gap. So let's go ahead and create a confidence interval. There's your data in your list. Go on down to T interval, just like we did in the last one, except this time we will select data. So you do not have to know what the mean and standard deviation are. Your calculator will do that as it goes through. Just bounce on down and it calculates the standard deviation. Notice it also does return your, your sample average, which is gonna be right in the middle of that, and then your standard sample standard deviation. What does this confidence interval say about their claim? Hmm. Well, they claimed 1,000, and 1,000 is not in our range. In fact, our range is quite a bit above 1,000, so I think it is safe to say that they have over 1,000 chips. And if you did a test of hypothesis, to test whether they had over 1,000 chips. I would have to say with a 2.5% alpha level, it would come out to be significant because we're well above that. Okay, doing tests of hypothesis for the mean. Very similar, except we're in the T distribution and we are gonna be using the standard error. So the test statistic, is very similar to a Z. You take your X bar, you subtract the null hypothesis and divide by the standard error. Of course, our standard error is a little bit different. And let's go ahead and do a quick example. Coffee machine dispenses coffee into paper cups. You're supposed to get 10 ounces of coffee, but the amount varies slightly from cup to cup. Here are the amounts measured in a random sample of 20 cups. Is there evidence that the machine is shortchanging customers? So you are going to put all the data, all 20 numbers in your calculator. And then we will check to see if our conditions are met. Well, let's see. They said it was a random sample. It's probably reasonable to expect. 20, hopefully, is less than 10% of the cups that the machine will produce. Hopefully, it can produce more than 200 cups in its lifetime. The data, put it in the calculator and graphed it, and it looks to be fairly symmetrical. looks pretty darn good. With only a sample of size 20, that's probably about as good as you can get. Okay, hypothesis for the mean. So first thing is our null and alternative hypothesis. Of course, we have mu's out here because we're not talking about proportions, we're talking about means. Their claim was that it would produce 10 ounces, and we're checking to see, see if they are shortchanging us, or if it's just random chance. They gave us data, so we're gonna do this from the data. Um, you can do it by doing one variable stats and coming up with X bar and S and calculating out your test statistic by hand, and then looking it up on the table or using the calculator. This is kind of a nice idea because this is how we started out with doing um, P hats, using the T distribution, a lower tail, a lower tail, so we're going from negative infinity up to our T value with 19 degrees of freedom and it gives us our p-value, really small p-value. Uh, if you're doing it just on the calculator, enter your data, go into stat, arrow over to tests, down to t-test. Remember, the tests are all above the intervals, so we're doing a test. And in this case, we have the data and we are doing, it is in list one, we did enter our null hypothesis of 10, and chose a lower tail, and then of course I'm gonna hit calculate, and it comes up, it does give us our T value, which we had before up here. It gives us our X bar, which I used to calculate my T value, and it gives us the sample standard deviation. 
which I also use to calculate the t-value. So you really don't have to do it by hand because you do get all the information just when you run the test. And again, the p-value is very small, so that is very strong evidence. Because the p-value is so small, there's strong evidence that the machine is dispensing less than 10 ounces per cup. Okay, your assignment on this chapter. The first four questions are quick little one-pointers, just those that are called reading questions. Um, just to keep you on your toes, you don't get a second chance on those, so you, but they're not supposed to be difficult. And then there are five questions where you have to calculate out either a confidence interval or a p-value. The emphasis is not on calculating. It is on your interpretations. So a lot of the questions have little things that you have to interpret and read them carefully. This might be a little bit longer assignment than some of the others, but I do promise that the next two will be shorter. And with that, wash your hands, stay healthy, and we'll get through this.